Welcome to vSkills, YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn about the top interview questions for Balanced Scorecard. So, let's get started. Question number 1. What is the Balanced Scorecard? The answer is Balanced Scorecard is a framework that aims at shareholder or financial, customer, internal processes and learning requirements of a business in order to create a system of linked objectives, measures, targets and initiatives which collectively describe the strategy of an organization and how that strategy can be achieved. Question number 2. What are the benefits of the Balanced Scorecard? The answer is, the benefits of the Balanced Scorecard are First, communicate the vision and strategy across the organization. Second, enables tracking of strategy implementation, with monthly or periodic reporting. Third, streamlines initiatives and aligns them with major objectives. Fourth, provides focus for the executive teams, clarifies roles and breaks down functional silos. Fifth, streamlines and simplifies the strategic planning process. Sixth, drives resources allocation and budgeting process. Seventh, improves reward system by linking measures to compensation. Question number three, what are the applications of balanced scorecard? The answer is, the applications of balanced scorecard are First, strategy implementation at the corporate level. Second, alignment of units or department strategy with the corporate strategy. Third, post-merger integration. Fourth, joint venture and alliances. Fifth, ID strategy. Sixth, HR strategy and rewards alignment. Seventh, budgeting and resources allocation. Eighth, initiatives management. Question number four, what is a strategy map? The answer is, a strategy map is a visual representation of the organization's strategy. It identifies the strategic objectives that the management team needs to focus on, and the linkages that exist between them. Question number five, what are the roles of a scorecard coordinator? The answer is, the roles of a scorecard coordinator are, first, receiving all relevant actual for the measures each month from individuals with reporting responsibilities. Second, receiving updates on the status of all initiatives from the individual project managers. Third, integrating all information into the balanced scorecard, initiatives master plan and master schedule each month. Fourth, analyze data to create agenda or key messages for each BSC meeting. Fifth, identify strategic issues for each month. Sixth, managing calendar of BSC meetings. Question number six, what type of organizations implement balanced scorecards? The answer is, the type of organizations that implement balanced scorecard are First, large, medium and small businesses to ensure achievement of revenue or profit objective for its shareholders. Second, non-profit organizations, enable the delivery of their still objectives, based on the availability of limited resources. Third, government organizations or departments to enable delivery to the public or community. Question number 7. Should we implement IT software to report the scorecard? The answer is. It is not completely necessary, but it is beneficial to implement an IT solution to automate reporting of the scorecard. It simplifies the process of physically compiling the data. However, only data available on the legacy or ERP system can be captured from the system. Question number 8. What are the challenges in implementing the scorecard? The answer is. There are several challenges in ensuring the successful implementation of the scorecard. However, the key one is the lack of senior management commitment. Question number nine, what are the different types of economic indicators? The answer is, there are three types of economic indicators. First, leading indicators point to future changes in the economy. They are extremely useful for short-term predictions of economic developments because they usually change before the economy changes. Second, Lagging indicators usually come after the economy changes. They are generally most helpful when used to confirm specific patterns. Third, coincident indicators provide valuable information about the current state of the economy within a particular area because they happen at the same time as the changes they signal. Question number 10. What are the key principles of the balanced scorecard? The answer is, the key principles of the balanced scorecard are a cause and effect relationship between objectives showing how customer value is created and how it is linked to the organization's goals. Align measures and initiatives with objectives. Question number 11. What are the balanced scorecard perspectives? The answer is, the four perspectives of a traditional balanced scorecard are First, financial perspective. Second, customer perspective. Third, 
internal business process perspective. Fourth, the learning and growth perspective. Question number 12, what does balanced scorecard cascading mean? The answer is, the idea of cascading is about translating top level objectives down to the lower levels. The key idea is that cascading is done by business goals, not by KPIs. Here you will find examples of some typical approaches to cascading. Question number 13, how to use a balanced scorecard for business? The answer is, there are no specific rules for specific business niches. The guiding ideas that strategists use for a retail company are similar to the ideas that one will use for a hotel business. Still, having some examples is always a good idea. Question number 14, what are the five dimensions of the business environment? The answer is, the five dimensions of the business environment are, first, legal environment. Second, political environment. Third, economic environment. Fourth, social environment. Fifth, technological environment. Question number 15, what are business functions? The answer is, businesses regardless of their type, size or financial position they all consist of three basic functions that run the business. Those three functions are operations, finance and marketing. Question number 16, what are the five P's of strategy? The answer is, the five P's of strategy are, first, plan, second, ploy, third, pattern, fourth, position, fifth, perspective. Question number 17, what are the four basic elements of strategic management? The answer is, the strategic management process is made up of four elements. First, situation analysis. Second, strategy formulation. Third, strategy implementation. Fourth, strategy evaluation. Question number 18, what is the difference between strategy and tactics in a negotiation? The answer is, tactics refer to the actions that each party involved in the negotiation process run in order to achieve their goals. While strategies are characterized by intervening as a general line of action, tactics are the set of actions which specify that strategy. Question number 19, what is decision making and what are the seven steps of it? The answer is, decision making is the process of making choices by identifying a decision, gathering information, and assessing alternative resolutions. The seven steps of it are, firstly, identify the decision. Then, gather relevant information. Next is, identify the alternatives. Weigh the evidence. After that, choose among the alternatives. And, take action. Lastly, review your decision. Question number 20, what is PESEL analysis? The answer is, a PESEL analysis is a framework to analyze the key factors like political, economic, sociological, technological, legal and environmental influencing an organization from the outside. Question number 21, what is SWOT analysis? The answer is, a SWOT analysis organizes your top strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats into an organized list and is usually presented in a simple 2 by 2 grid. Question number 22, what do you mean by value chain analysis? The answer is, value chain analysis is defined as the process of looking at the activities that go into changing the inputs for a product or service into an output that is valued by the customer. Question number 23, what are the five primary activities of a value chain? The answer is, the primary activities of Michael Porter's value chain are, inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and service. Question number 24, what is a competitive market analysis? The answer is, a competitive analysis is a strategy that involves researching major competitors to gain insight into their products, sales, and marketing tactics. Implementing stronger business strategies, warding off competitors, and capturing market share are just a few benefits of conducting a competitive market analysis. Question number 25, what are KPI tools? The answer is, KPI tools are a business reporting solution used by companies to track, monitor, and generate actionable insights from key performance indicators specific to the company's business objectives. Question number 26, what is a CRM tool and what are the different types of it? The answer is, a CRM tool lets you store customer and prospect contact information, identify sales opportunities, record service issues, and manage marketing campaigns, all in one central location. 
the different types of CRM are first, strategic CRM, second, operational CRM, third, analytical CRM, fourth, collaborative CRM. Question number 27 What is strategic CRM? The answer is Strategic CRM is a type of CRM in which the business puts the customers first. It collects, segregates, and applies information about customers and market trends to come up with a better value proposition for the customer. Question number 28. What is operational CRM? The answer is. Operational CRM is oriented towards customer-centric business processes such as marketing, selling, and services. It includes the following automations. Salesforce automation, marketing automation, and service automation. Question number 29. What does marketing automation involves? The answer is. Marketing automation involves market segmentation, campaigns management, event-based marketing, and promotions. The campaign modules of marketing automation enable the marketing force to access customer-related data for designing, executing and evaluating targeted offers, and communications. Question number 30. What is process mapping used for and what are the different types of it? The answer is. Process mapping is used to identify all the steps and decisions of an existing process in diagrammatic form, which helps organizations identify improvement opportunities so that they can improve efficiency within an organization. The three types of it are. First, operational process. Second, supporting process. Third, management process. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.